Hey guys, it's Spacey Sims, and we are here with a new game. This is a visual novel, and it's a little bit of a romancy thing, so don't, please don't judge me for this. <laughs> You'll see that there's actually another one going up this week, too, so, and I say the same thing, like, don't judge me. I am not a romance person, I hate romance novels. I hate when I'm reading, like, any kind of a fantasy novel or anything and there's this overpowering romance. Like, it's always insta-love and it's always vomit-inducing and I'm always like, I hate it. I really do. But I played this because it was free on Steam. Uh, the prologue is free on Steam. So you basically kind of find out a little bit about the main character and the kind of backstory. And then you basically choose a path for one of these guys. Um, and that's kind of what you get in a little bit of the prologue. And I'm sorry, I should back up a little bit. It's called Mystic Destinies, Serendipity of Aeons, whatever. I think you figured that out by now because you can see that. Um, I'm going to read off of the Steam guide, the page. Yeah, so it says, During your first year of university, immense magical powers are forced onto you, thus revealing the supernatural world hidden within ours. But you must learn to control your powers with the help of a partner or risk destroying everything around you. Will your new fate be one of tragedy or serendipity? And that's basically the whole point. Um, is the you pick one of these guys to help you control your magical powers, and then I guess that's where the romance happens. But of course, in the prologue, the part that's free on Steam to play, you can only kind of see, uh, you can pick one of them, and then you could go down the path a little bit, just to kind of, like the intro part. You don't really get past that, so you can't really, you know, see how the whole game works out. But I kind of liked that first part. So I was like, I was intrigued enough to buy the paths that are available. And it's really only for this guy here. This guy, this yellow dude over here. Blonde hair and yellow coat. Orangey coat, I guess. And the blue haired, blue sweater dude over here. Um, and the one, of course, I chose when I was going down the path was a little pink haired dude. Because his hair is beautiful. I love it. Um, and I think he's coming out next. So he should be coming out soon. But So we'll only be able to go down the paths of these two guys. And then the rest of them eventually will come out. And, you know, maybe we won't continue playing it. Maybe we'll just go down the one path. Um, it really, I guess, depends on what people think. Or if I go down one path and then, or, and I'm like, okay, cool, that's awesome. And that was fun and dandy. And then I play other games and I kind of forget about it. Because God knows when this guy's path is going to come out. But anyway, so we are going to jump right in. But here's the first thing. I, we have to name her. And I totally forgot about that. So here's my thing. In the other game that I am playing, I basically, I just, I named the girl Spacey. And it's so freaking awkward when they're like, hey, Spacey, or they say your name and you're like, I can't, this is, this is weird. This is so weird to me. Um, so I've decided that I'm going to use a random name generator. So I am actually out on a fantasy name generator page. Ooh, unicorn names. Let's see. Uh, let's do female names. Sunshine. <laughs> That's the first one that comes up. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're going to name her Sparkles. We're naming her Sparkles because that's freaking hilarious. My bird just pooped on my couch like an asshole. It's like he knows I'm not paying attention to him. Hi, jerk. That was not nice. It's a brand new couch, brother. I was actually going to call him a butt munch and then a mother flipper. So that came out a bother. Whatever. Okay, we're naming her Sparkles. I, you know what? I'm just really wondering if... Uh... Sparkles. Uh... <laughs> I can't do it. I can't name her Sparkles. That's just ridiculous. There's none of these are actually like really good actual names that I can use. Inara's cute. I oh, will name her Inara. That works. That's a unicorn name and it sounds kind of like a person named Sparkles. That Sparkles sounds like a stripper. We'll name her Inara. That works. Uh, can we? No! Oh! Oh, wait. Oh, last name. Fujimoto works for me. <laughs> Sorry, sure. Okay. Today, my first year of undergraduate studies begins 
at Hagawara University. And you know how I am really awesome at Japanese names. So, you know, don't judge me again because I'll be like, and blah, blah, blah. I don't know how to pronounce names and I'm really bad at it. I'm really bad at it. Uh, I made sure to get here early so I could make it on time to my first lecture. But somehow I managed to get horribly lost. Well, it's a new day and a new school. And universities are huge, so... I climbed the stairs to look for my classroom on the second floor, but couldn't find it. I turned to go back. Uh, to go, uh, I turned to go back down, still reading the map. Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! Suddenly, I collided into something, or rather, someone. Hey, he's got orange eyes. It's a little freaky. Whoa! I lose my balance and throw out my arms to catch myself. My things fly out of my hands, scattering all over the steps. At first, I read that as my thing flies out of my hand, and I'm like, I couldn't name it something got it. But the guy I ran into puts out his arms to catch me before I fall forward. Over his shoulder, I can see the contents of my bag that have been upended. I click my tongue and try to move to gather them. But then I realize the guy still has his arm around my waist. I pull back to look at him and our eyes meet. Are you okay? Yeah, thanks for catching me, but could you let me go now? Oh, yeah, sorry. He lets go of my waist hastily and takes a small step back. I really wish I could do voices, but I feel like I would just not remember the voices that I do for them. Here, let me pick those up for you. He bends down to gather my things before they get stepped on by the passersby. I'm Shu. He picks up... Oh, is it is it Shu or Shao? I think it's Shu. I don't know. He picks up my map and looks at it before handing everything to me. I looked it up, like, a couple of weeks ago just to make sure I was going to pronounce it right, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Um, uh, let's find out. Let's find out if we were pronouncing it wrong. I don't know how to do it. I can't find anything that actually would probably say it for us. Hmm. Anyway. We'll say shoe. <laughs> I don't know. Shao? Shao? Shoe? I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. He picks up my map and looks at it before handing everything to me. Is this your first year here? Yeah. Then welcome. It's my second year here myself. He taps a line on my class schedule. If you were looking for this, you just passed it. It's back down the hall on the left. Oh, thanks. I've barely taken the paper back before she grabs my wrist to look at my watch. Oh, crap. I just realized my next class is on the other side of campus. I got a jet. See ya. Before I fully realize what's happening, she was turned around and is sprinting away. What was that all about? But since I'm about to be late for class, I don't have much time to wonder. Pushing Shu out of my mind, I start running toward class myself. After a morning of classes, it's finally lunchtime. I'm at the computer, paying for my food, or at least I'm supposed to be. When I reach in my bag, I grope around for my wallet, but I can't find it. The cashier stares at me, wholly unimpressed with my lack of preparation. Oh no, don't tell me I lost it. I'm starting to panic when a black leather wallet is thrust in front of my face. Is this yours? I'm not actually sure at first until I see the small star-shaped charm hanging off it. I feel immense relief as I take the wallet. Oh, good, that's relief. I was looking everywhere for you. Thank you, I thought I lost it for good. Is there anything... Don't worry about it. He's got pretty purple eyes. You're cute enough that it's payment enough for me if you smile. He looks expectant enough that I manage to pull my lips into some semblance of a smile. Looking strangely satisfied, he points to the annoyed cashier before hopping over the line's railing. Completely flustered, I shake my head to clear it. I quickly turn around to pay for my food and take my tray to head outside. I've been cooped up all day. I need some fresh air. I step outside into sunshine as a chilly breeze passes right through me. I shiver involuntarily, but it feels refreshing. Thankfully, it also means that there's hardly anyone outside. I sit on a bench at the on the grass and relax as I admire the campus's scenery. But then I hear a voice nearby. I slowly stop chewing and look around to identify the voice. Well, come on, don't be ridiculous. There's no way that actually happened. The male's voice is laughing and energetic, yet I see no one around. It sounds like someone talking on the phone. Whatever it is, it's kind of annoying. Someone moves into view near the flowers. They seem to be looking at nothing in particular. Yeah, <laughs> he's looking so weird. I love his hair, it's so pretty. Ha <laughs> fine, fine. I believe you. You don't have to look so annoyed. Aha. Uh -huh. Spotted the mystery, man. I wonder what's so funny. Startled by the sudden sound of a phone ringing, I nearly choke on my food. Huh? 
I slowly, almost fearfully look over at the guy. I thought... Uh, I slowly, almost fearfully look over at the guy I thought was on the phone and see him pull one out of his pocket. He checks it, then puts it away. All while happily talking to nothing. I'm pondering what just happened when I notice that the man is looking at me. The guy. He's not really... Well, I mean, you know, I just feel weird. The man. He's like, he's not in his 40s. He's like probably like 18 or 19. Maybe you should brush up on your spying skills if you want to listen in on people. I quickly turn back around. Okay. I try to ignore the weird guy and manage to finish eating my lunch in relative peace. I like how everything it starts out, I do this, I, 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 I. It's a lot of eyes. When I get to my apartment, I open up my laptop. It's very simple, but like I kind of forgot like how simple the writing is, but I do like the whole magic kind of aspect, so. I want to sign up for the business club I heard about before tomorrow. My phone vibrates before I can do much, though. I take it out and realize that there's a rare email from my mother. Uh, oh my god, her name is Chihiro! She's not dead, guys! For those of you who watch my Danganronpa series, Chihiro is uh, one of the characters, and spoiler alert, obviously she dies. Like, 90% of the freaking characters not die, so no surprise. Uh, how was your first week of school? Is everything going well? You left your laptop charger here. I'll be at home Saturday, so could you come get it then? I'd like to take you out to a nice restaurant to celebrate your first week. Mom. Oh, of course I left something important at home. Like, who the hell leaves their laptop charger? Like, your laptop is usually plugged into it. It's like the first thing you goddamn pack. Uh, and I was trying to be so careful about everything. The end of the email is a bit strange, though. She's never really been the type to celebrate things. Regardless of my thoughts, I type a reply that I'll be there on Saturday. But the strange feeling the email gave me never goes away. The next day, I managed to get through classes without getting lost. I finished classes for today, and I'm headed to the first meeting of the business club. Room 129. There it is. I push open the door. As soon as I do, a black-haired man turns to face me. Welcome to the... He stops mid-sentence and stares at me. I'm struck silent for an entirely different reason. The man has striking aqua-colored eyes. They match his tie. We stare at each other for a few moments, for, for a, a few moments, before a voice from behind me interrupts. Hey, come on, let me in! Flustered, I hurry to move out of the way and step into the classroom. As the man goes by, I recognize his distinctive hair. Oh, it's that weird guy who was talking to himself. I glance at the black-haired man again, but he's turned away from me. I turn to face the class and lock eyes with the young-looking guy in yellow. What does it say? I did it something. Is that... The guy from the cafeteria? You should recognize him. I mean, he's got white hair with blue tips and purple eyes, for God's sakes. He gives me a big smile that strikes me as suddenly familiar. Weird, I feel like I know him from somewhere. He's also looking a little crazy right now. He lifts his legs up and jumps to his feet in one fluent movement. Then he turns to the newcomer. Hey, Shinji, I came here to talk to you. Oh? Oh, I forgot about that. I'll lend you that uh, book next week, Takumi. Huh? It's not about the book, it's... Excuse me, please don't block the walkway. I hear an irritated voice behind me. I turn to look equally irritated at his rudeness. Love at first sight already, Tetsuya? Shut up, Shinji. I immediately move away from the door and go to sit down. A few moments after I do, someone starts yelling. No, the peaches are running away! I look over to where I heard the voice and see a guy in a bright orange hoodie sleeping on the couch. Is that... I think it was Shu? What the hell? Why is he here? I'm not really sure. He did stay up pretty late practicing for a part he just got, though. So I guess napping? I think he said something about wanting to join the club. Whatever, let's just start the meeting. Thanks for watching the club for me, Pro Professor Kazama. Tetsuya turns around, but the professor is gone. How did he slip out without anyone noticing? It was magic! But no one else seems to think it's all that strange. The meeting commences without any further weirdness, though, uh, though I'm surprised at how small it is. Since it seems like we have some new members this year, maybe we should start this meeting by introducing ourselves. I'm Tetsuya Yukimura, the club president and a third year. I'm Shinji Hir Hirayama, a third year. I've been a member of this club for a long time. Though I think everyone here probably already knows me. I'm Takumi Ari, or Taku for short. 
Ari, Ari, I have no idea. Uh, it's my first year here, but I'm not actually even part of this club. <laughs> I'm just so bad at this. I raised an, eyeba, uh, an eyebrow at Takumi's introduction. So why is he even here? I look at Shu and Tatsuya kicks the couch. Shu startles awake. Huh? Where am I? At the business club you were talking about joining? Huh? Oh, oh. We're doing introductions and it's your turn. Oh, all right. I'm Shu Hattori, a second year. I just joined the club. My acting teacher told me if I want to become an actor, it's good to get some understanding with how business works. So here I am. Everyone looks at me expectantly and I stand up and slightly bow. I'm Inara Fujimoto. It's my first year here. It's nice to meet you all. I sit back down and Tatsuya starts going over what the purpose of this club is and the kinds of things we'll be doing in it. But every now and then I see the purple-haired guy, Shinji, glancing at me. He's got such pretty hair! That's actually the hair that I want. I want my hair, well, darker purple, not this pinky. But with, like, the pink tips, that's 100% it. Bitch has my hair. What, am I, like, super attractive today? See, me, I would be like, why are you looking at me? And I would get all defensive, not like, it must be because I'm gorgeous. <laughs> Eventually the meeting is over and I stand up and grab my bag. But Shinji walks slowly up to me like he's in a daze. He stares me in the face. You're not... What? Jeez, is there something on my face? Suddenly, uh, Shinji just walks right past me. It's as if I don't exist at all. It's Saturday, and I've gotten lost a few times. But I finally found the coffee house Mother wanted me to meet her at. I mean, that was like, there's not even like a jump, like a pause where it says Saturday. And it, like, you start, it's just all of a sudden it's Saturday. It's like, Saturday! That's the only thing that I think my complaint would be, is that there's not like a nice, logical, like, hey, okay, we're transitioning into a new day or something. You know, it's just instantly... It's like if you're reading a book and there's no chapters. <laughs> so, or even like, you know, how some chapters have the dot, dot, dots, like the little asterisks. So you at least know it's the next section. It's not even like that here. Uh, I spot her immediately as I enter, sitting at one of the tables by the window. Mother looks as put together as ever and like she's 22. I walk up to her table. She only gives me one of her inscrutable expressions. Hello, Mother. I'm sorry I'm late. I got a little lost on the way. As I take my seat, I realize she's already ordering something for me. Mother looks at me over her teacup with that usual half-smile of hers. I did not wait long, but I did wonder if you would be able to find this place. I know it's a little out of the way. Most people don't know much about this district. I eventually figured it out. So, um, I didn't know you frequented places like this. Mother gently places her teacup on the table. The eerie color of her eyes always makes me feel a little like feel like she could see right through me. For a moment, I feel like I'm ten again, being judged to see if I'm worthy of knowledge. I don't. But a very old friend of mine owns this place. I wanted to come see it at least once. An old friend? Now I'm curious, though I doubt she'd actually tell me more. Oh, I see. An uncomfortable silence settles upon us as usual. And as usual, I start rambling. So, school has been great. I even joined a club. Oh, but how are Dad and Kayo doing? Hmm, your sister began school. She apparently made a friend, a very nice boy. And Rukuro is out of the country on business this week. Having nothing else to say, the conversation quickly dies down. I look out the window as I quietly sip my tea. Lunch with mother, it's not even a bit awkward. Nope. But at least Kayo has a new friend. I hold back a sigh. Inara, I must admit, I asked you to meet me here for a reason. There's somewhere I want to take you. I've been meaning to ever since we came back to Japan. Will you come with me? She seems sad. It's utterly strange to see my always controlled mother let any emotion slip. I'm left speechless, but I can't hide the curiosity bubbling up inside of me. She almost never wants to share anything with me, so this has to be something huge. Of course, mother, I'll go with you. After we finish eating, I follow mother out of the coffee house. High heels click, her high heels click against the pavement as she walks in front of me. It's just the same. Even though I'm 20, I still feel like a child. Always following, never catching up. But maybe now she sees me as an adult. Maybe things will be different from now on. It's with these thoughts that I eagerly get into her car. I sit in the car beside my mother, looking out the window. 
Maybe if I ask, she'll tell me where we're going for once. I kind of at least wish if they were going to do this, they could have just had the mother sketched in there because it looks a little weird when the mother like stands in the car. I sigh, knowing she'll just evade the question if she doesn't want to answer it. If she wanted me to know, she would have told me. I sneak a glance at her. Her knuckles are white from how hard she's gripping the steering wheel, and there's a somber, somber expression on her face that I can't quite place. Seeing her all... Seeing her... Her, of all people so unsettled, makes me beyond anxious. Mother, where are you taking me? Um, Mother... Yes? Where are we going? I can't keep the nervousness out of my voice, and Mother seems to pick up on it, as she usually does. There's no need to concern yourself. I sit back in the seat with a sigh. I knew she wasn't going to tell me, but unexpectedly, Mother keeps talking. We are going to the countryside. I will explain more when we get there, but please, just relax and make yourself comfortable. Countryside? Guess it might be a few hours, then. Can't believe she even said that much, though. I settle in my seat for the long ride, feeling like I might have made a small breakthrough with my mother. After a very quiet car ride, we finally stopped at a house in the country. I step outside of the car in amazement. A traditional home. Whose house is this? The gentle breeze sways through the tall field, rippling through the blades of grass. It makes such a pleasant sound, and it smells so good out here that my nerves are somewhat calmed. It's beautiful out here. Yes, it is. Mother walks ahead of me with a key and unlocks the door to the house. I hesitate a moment, not wanting to go inside. The sunset is so beautiful, but I can't keep Mother waiting. Maybe I can come outside later. Regretfully, I walk into the house ahead of Mother, who follows me in and shuts the door. Wait here while I bring us some refreshments. Okay... Mother leaves before I can finish the sentence. Alone in the room, I sit down at the table. I'm not sure where we are, but it's very peaceful out here. The sound of the door sliding open distracts me from my thoughts. Mother comes in carrying a tray of snacks and some tea. She made that for fast. She glides across the room and gently places the tray on the table in front of me. Now we can have our chat a little more comfortably. Thank you. Mother sits down on the other side of the table. I'm sure you're wondering what this place is and why I brought you here. Of course. For a few moments, we sit in silence. Mother seems to be thinking about how to say it. This house is built on the land my ancestors lived on hundreds of years ago. They lived and worked here. They spilled blood here. The way she says it sends a faint chill down my spine. I wanted to bring you here to show you this place that's so full of history. There aren't many things left here from that time, but I thought you would enjoy seeing it anyway. She takes a small sip from her cup and I follow suit. Pleasant warmth washes over my body. Thank you for the tea. It's very good. Can you sh show me around a bit? Ugh. Wave of dizziness hits me like a ton of bricks. As the world starts to spin, I have to physically hold onto the table. Inara, are you alright? I, uh, I don't feel well. Everything keeps spinning and my vision goes black. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I open my eyes. I see the moon hanging up high in the sky above me. The sky's... Wait, huh? Where the hell am I? I try to move, but my body is completely unresponsive. What is this? What's going on? Why can't I move? H help. Help me. Someone, please. I'm panicking, but I can hear someone coming closer. They're muttering under their breath. Up already? <laughs> I knew I should have used more potion. Did they say potion? Help me, please help. Someone sighs. It's useless to shout, you know. No one will hear you. But don't worry, this will be over soon. Wh wh who are you? What's going on? Another sigh, then footsteps. A familiar face comes into view. Mother stands over me, her eyes glowing. Mother? What? I told you, it's going to be over soon. Mother snaps her fingers. Sorry, I have to adjust. Uh, I'm sliding down my couch. As if I was a marionette of strings, the body plays along, sitting up on its own. I can see a strange chalk circle outlined on the ground around us. Her heels click against the stone. She walks to something that looks suspiciously like an altar of some sort. Please explain. What have you done to me? Why? How? I can see her eyes dart toward me momentarily as she continues to work. She places various crystals along the chalk outline. My heart is beating impossibly fast. I try to stay calm as 
stay as calm as I possibly can. I suppose I should explain. It's only fair. She stops and looks at me. I am... I am many things. My true name is Shizuka. I am the last living sorceress. A mistake rendered me cursed, unable to die. What? But how is that even possible? I want to doubt her words to simply write this all away as some weird dream. But it feels real. Too real. She laughs and continues her strange preparations. The curse of immortality is immortal as well. Of course it would be like that. It's almost funny. I might have been an accident. It might have been an accident, but considering who he is, it makes perfect sense. For centuries, I have searched for a way to undo the curse. I thought it hopeless until a friend told me a way I could finally be rid of it. Mother continues to carefully place crystals in a circle around me. The only way it would work, however, is if I completed the ritual on a very specific date, and if I had someone very specific to transfer the curse onto. With a momentary pause, she glances at me. A daughter? No, not a daughter. A homunculus. <laughs> The perfect copy of my physical self. And so I created you. I am not your mother. I am an alchemist who made... I'm the alchemist who made you. Any words I could say... Oh, any words I could say get stuck in my throat. I feel like I'm going to pass out again. This has to be some sick joke. This can't be real. This is all just a terrible dream. I just need to wake up and I'll be back in my bedroom. But if this, by some insane chance is real. There are some things I want to know. Who cursed you? Who was it that cursed you? Just how old are you anyway? A god, so ancient he no longer remembers his own name. As for my age, I'm over 700 years old. There are a million more things I want to ask, but Shizuka carefully places the last crystal. The chalk outline suddenly glows an eerie green. Wait, stop! With a wave of her hand, my lips snap shut. Now completely paralyzed, all I can do is watch. Shizuka kneels in front of me. She takes out a small vial of some strange liquid. It looks like billions of tiny, shimmering stars gently swirling together in a tiny bottle. It sounds pretty. She quickly downs it. Ugh, tasted about as bad as I expected. Shizuka stares at me, and I can see the green of her eyes start to swirl and change into brown. I feel a sharp pain in mine at the same time. I want to scream as the pain spreads from my eyes to the rest of my body. But since I can't move, all I can do is scream in my head. It hurts so much. Please make it stop. As my vision slowly darkens, I see Shizuka stand up, her eyes now completely brown. I'm sorry. I can barely hear her whisper the words. As she disappears from my vision, the world goes dark. Dun, dun, dun. And see, it's like, now this is perfect time. So I am going to wrap this part up here. So now we know kind of what happens and how she gets sort of magical powers. She's like now been cursed by her mother thing. Um, <laughs> it wasn't really her mother, but whatever. So anyway, I am going to wrap this part up here. I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.